<clears throat> okay, welcome to Young Creators. We're on our fourth lesson. There's only eight, so after today we'll be halfway done. Um, and I just love getting to know each of you more and more every week. So really, this is just a highlight for me. Today is pretty fun, but it's a little tricky. I'm going to just say, when I think in my head the process is straightforward, it might feel a little <laughs> confusing to you. So be patient and kind to yourself and easy, and we can try several things several times. Um, it is a new thing for me to be learning how to teach through a computer alone in my room to you and your houses instead of being in where you're sharing space with me and I can walk around and look at your object and touch and feel and get a feel for it. So anyway, but it's pretty fun. We're gonna get into it. We're going to start with this page and it should be a reminder for you. We talked on lesson one, we talked about Zentangles. We talked about the element of line. We have also talked about the element of space, the element of positive and negative space, the element of color. Um, so I keep trying to integrate all of these and all of these elements should kind of come into play with, with everything you make. So back to the element of line, talking about color. And today I want to talk to you about a principle of design. The principle we're gonna be talking to is symmetry and radial symmetry. But we're gonna start with this. So take your marker, just get into the little warm up where we connect our eyes and our hands and that heart space, we open that up and we're just going to kind of get into the zone and, and go ahead and just start practicing lines. <clears throat> you can, I, I'm loving these markers and we're gonna use these markers today. So I'm going to just keep repeating those lines just to get into the rhythm. If you feel like they need to be something else, fantastic. If you are like, oh, this line is great. However, it needs a loop on top of it. Make yourself a loop. This is your page to just explore lines. And we're going to integrate these lines into our printmaking because the more you understand pattern and, and the design that lines can bring, the more interesting your printmaking will be when we go to start carving your pieces. So just kind of start playing with that. And I also, um, while you're working on it, we'll talk to you about symmetry. That's a big art word. I always like to use all my art words. Symmetry is when something is the same. S they're both S's, symmetry and same. Thinking of them being the same on both sides. So when you can, if you can draw a line down the middle of something and have it be like a mirror and the same on both sides, then yes, it is symmetrical. My face, most faces are pretty much symmetrical. I can draw a line like this. It's not perfectly because this hair is a little different than this, so it wouldn't be a perfect mirror side to side. But in general, I have an eyebrow and an eyebrow on each side and an eye and an eye on each side and earrings, if I put them both in. That's called symmetrical, same symmetrical on both sides. When I look at this, I see a couple of those lines that are also symmetrical, meaning I could draw a line of symmetry down the middle and it would make it the same on both sides. Um, <clears throat> and if you want to find those parts and draw the line of symmetry, that will be give, getting you into thinking that as well. So I'm going to look down here and this one, I'm using green. I'm going all the way across. Take one second to put your eyeballs up here. Do you see that green line? That green line, looks like Castellers are joining us. <clears throat> that green line divides that line in half and makes it the same on both sides. So that line is indeed symmetrical. So if you see some others that are symmetrical, I think the one right underneath it is also symmetrical. And the one underneath that is symmetrical. Okay. 
Hey, hey, who have we got here? <coughs> Hi. Hello, beautiful Charlotte. What do you think? <laughs> Hi, who's this? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can. Okay. That's Bobby. Bobby Rose. Hi, Bobby. How are you? Thanks yeah. for joining us. I wish I would have thrown in extra supplies, but maybe He's you might have cash as a supply kit today. So it's totally fine. Did his cash come in or no? Nope, it's just going to be these two girls today. There you go. Bingo. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. You'll need a little bowl of water and a paper towel, too, each of you. Okay? Awesome. Thanks for being here. I'm glad you made it. I noticed you saw me last week. I know. You hopped into another class, and that was so fun for me to see you jump in there with that cute Sarah. I love it. <clears throat> okay, friends, so right now we're just practicing lines. So you should have this page out and your markers or your colored pencils or your pencil and start just getting into the repetitions of lines. And if you want to add to those, maybe you think that they would be better if they have another swirly somewhere, go for it. This is your creative space to be creating patterns. So when a line is repeated or an image is repeated over and over, it creates a pattern. That's another art word, pattern. So element of line, patterns, and symmetry. That's a principle of design. So symmetrical things have a line. You can draw a line of symmetry down the middle, and it's the same on both sides. <clears throat> <laughs> Hi, Luella. <laughs> I have you on gallery view so I can see all the cute faces. Oh my goodness, I love these faces. Hi, Gabby. Hi. Can I hear you yet? Hi. I still can't hear you, but I can see your beautiful face. <laughs> what? <gasps> when did you do that, Gabby? Oh my goodness, you are amazing. See, I can almost read your lips that you did it at some times, but I can't hear your voice. Ah! <laughs> before, you did it before art class. Jill's figuring out how to read lips. That's pretty fantastic. Oh, Gabby, I love it. This girl is five. Hi, Andrea. I don't know why I can't hear her. Sometimes you have to go into the settings of an iPad or computer and enable the microphone <clears throat> under the Zoom part, but I don't know. Gabby's only five and it totally blows my mind every time because she comes out with these things that I swear I don't think five-year-olds usually do. You just amaze me. After we get into this, I'm gonna just, instead of sharing, um, Thanks, sweetie, that's gorgeous. Instead of sharing screen, I'm just gonna hold this up. I think it's just as easy. <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about symmetry for one more second. Things that can be divided down the middle. I could draw a line down the middle of that dragonfly and it would be the same on both sides, same, same, that would be symmetry. So put your eyeballs on the screen for one minute. Let me just show you this because we're going to move from symmetrical where there's one line of symmetry. That bug too, I could take a line, you go right down the middle. It's like a mirror, same, same on both sides. Now I've moved into radial symmetry. Radial means it's symmetrical starting from a circle and it's building the same all the way out. This one, look how many lines of symmetry I could draw a whole bunch and it would be the same on both sides. So radial symmetry, radial symmetry has several lines of symmetry. So this is called radial symmetry and we're gonna try it. We started talking about this as a mandala on the day one when we started learning about lines. Here's another one with radial symmetry. Starting from the middle. I can't hear you. Oh, we got her. We hear you. Yes. Hi. Hi and hi. Let's pull her back in. 
This voice is worth listening to. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Hold on, hold on. There you are. Say hi. Hi. I got it. Thanks, Andrea, for checking that. Hi. Yes, we got you. <laughs> Thanks for being here. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? I can hear you. What the heck? Oh, now this is weird. I can hear you and you can't hear me. I don't get it. Oh my goodness. Okay, friends, after we spend some time on this and give me, give me a thumbs up. Are we getting through some of the lines? Give me a thumbs up if you've kind of getting through that and you're feeling warmed up with the lines. Give me a thumbs up. Ooh, yeah, or just show me, just like Sage's. Thank you, Sage. Perfect. Thanks, Natalie and Lexi. All right, let's take this now and wrap it like a radial symmetry. So pull out those sketchbooks. We do those every week. Do, do, do. I need my sketchbook. <laughs> this little cutie. Can you hear me now, Miss Gabby? Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes? Yeah? I can hear you. It's perfect. I got my notebook out. Bingo. Ooh, you are always doing awesome drawings. All right. Thank you, darling. Thanks for figuring it out. We for sure need your face in this. So take your sketchbook. Let's just look through there. Oh, we did a mandala. We worked on lines. Awesome. This is going to come into play today. We worked on positive and negative space. Here's a funny portrait of a crazy lady. Symmetry, if we do the line, it's the same on both sides, except for the hair. Talking about symmetry. And then things got really crazy when we started talking about Picasso. Now I'm on my next blank page. And we're going to try to think of these as wrapped around now in a circle, okay? So now we've got radial symmetry. I am going to use my markers. You can use colored pencils if you want. But you're going to want to get pretty detailed and pretty tight and pretty intricate because the better you can do lines and repetitions and really thinking in the way of patterns, um, this printmaking will be really interesting. So I, I could even take these patterns and, and do those around. <clears throat> radial symmetry. Radial means around circle. Remember when we're doing lines, we can do broken, we can do continuous. So if you put in little things like dots or triangles or circles, those would be when you're doing them in a pattern, that's called a broken line, when you do them over and over again. So start warming up. It's like we're doing a zentangle, but we're doing a zentangle <clears throat> as a radial symmetry. Notice I'm being pretty intricate. Put your eyeballs on that screen. Do you see that I'm, I'm really paying attention to detail? I'm not just slopping it all over the place. I'm really thinking about every single line and being very deliberate with it, okay? Um, will you guys give me, and Gabby, now I can't see you. What the heck? I could hear you for a minute. Gabby, can you hear me? <laughs> Technical difficulties. I can't see Gabby and I can't hear her. <clears throat> oh, oh, she's on a different screen, I think. Okay, we got two Gabbies, perfect. We I, computers. I got you, I got you Gabby, you have okay. another slot. It must be another device or another tab. No big deal, I will ignore it. Um, okay, so working on radial symmetry, moving out. 
with those patterns. Somebody give me a thumbs up. I made a lot of Zentangle papers for you. Have any of you done Zentangles outside of art class? Has anybody done that? Little Miss Sage has and Mac and Gray. Awesome. Isla. And you're not in trouble if you don't. Um, I'm just saying. Hi, Charlotte. <laughs> yes. I, you're not in trouble if you don't. I'm just asking if you do. Some people really like getting into those and that feels good to them. And that's kind of a place that will calm them and bring those emotions down. Just the act of doing these lines really is a healing space and it brings you to kind of that calm center and you should feel pretty, the stress kind of goes away when we tap into this amazing space we all got. So <clears throat> creating this mandala. I am talking so many art words today because we have a lot of art elements and principles of design that all come into printmaking. So I'm going to talk about one more while you're working on this mandala. Uh, Miss Jill's just going to talk for a little while, and I'm going to ask you occasionally to put your eyeballs up here. Um, and that is the element of texture. Does anybody know what it means to say the word texture? What, what does that mean when I say texture? Miss Sophia, Miss Confident Girl, her hand shot right up. What is it? Uh, it means the way the artwork feels. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Perfect. So it's the way something looks or feels that's fantastic thank you some the way something looks hey while i got you up here miss sophia will you pet your brother's head and tell me how that feels <laughs> say matthew is it okay matthew scoot your head over there there you go touch his hair and tell me how it feels oh so nice such a nice little boy <laughs> how does it feel it feels smooth Smooth. Ooh, that's a great texture word. Is there something else on around you that you could touch and give me a texture word? Um, I guess this is, I thought it would be rough, but it's not rough. Oh, has it been wet? No. Yet? Not yeah. yet? Matthew dipped mine in the water. Okay, so I dipped mine in water. Perfect. So tell me, give me some descriptive texture words. Well, it's soft, but soft. it's not rough and it's not, not smooth. Not so. rough. These are great words. So fantastic. What would you say, Matthew? Can you can you think of a texture word? I don't know. <laughs> it feels like it's a pillow. A pillow, okay, feels like a pillow, so soft. Perfect, that was awesome. Thank you for sharing. All right. Hey, Mr. Kessler. What is that? What? Holy smokes. It's, it's a mandala that I have. It's, it's, uh, it's a... I, say that one more time. I lost your voice for a second. Yes, I'm losing your voice a little bit. Awesome. I wonder if I... Oh, there you are. Say that one more time, Paul. Oh, this isn't a radial symmetrical mandala, but it is one of my favorite mandalas. It comes from Mexico. Dang! You know what? You always have so many incredible things to add to my lessons. Radial symmetry mandala. Amazing. Thank you for sharing. It's not radial symmetrical. It's not radial symmetrical. Not perfectly, is it? You can't do a whole metal and stuff. And there are different symbols yep. that represent different um, different gods. Like it's uh, it's a pretty. It's they found it in stone and they this, they just put it into a plate, basically. Holy smokes, that is rad. Good job. Hey, here's a question. Touch that. Is there a texture word you could tell me when you touch it? How does that feel? I think the Wi-Fi is jumping in and out a little bit. God, my God. Say it one more time. What's the texture word? How does it feel when you touch it? Um, 
kind of rough because, because they actually have a lot of like stuff sticking out of it. Like, awesome. Okay, that's good to know because we're going to get into that with yeah. Clint. It's feeling rough. You can feel the, in, the indentions in it. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. It's amazing. Um, let's see here. Um, hey, you, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, you cute girls, Lexi and Natalie. Hi. Let me undo it. Oh, you got it? Here, I got you. Now try. I think I got you. Oh, now it muted again. Hit it one more time. <laughs> We're hey, both to do something. hey, yes, hi. Will you touch something in your kitchen or your hair or the table to find how you can come up with a descriptive word, how something feels? Lexi, how does that sponge feel? It feels squishy and soft. And squishy and soft. Those are great words. This is Gus. He's squishy and soft. <laughs> Perfect. What's something else? Um, this one, the Sharpie, the end of it, it feels really, really, really smooth and round. Smooth, round, fantastic. Yes, texture words everywhere. You guys are the best. This is a nice texture word. Look at this guy. This is wet and squishy and soft. Oh, it's so soft and so nice and squishy. There you go. There's a really nice piece of texture. Thanks, Gus, for showing us texture. You're so full of love. So talking about texture, will you put your eyeballs up here for a minute? And let's talk texture words, and then let's get into this. All right, texture. We've already used some of these words, smooth and rough and soft and hard, woven, bumpy, lumpy, rigid, jagged. Um, these are all words that describe how something feels. Now, in art, there's two things. There's two ways to have texture. One is actual texture. It actually is bumpy or rough or whatever just like max said hey when i actually touch this it feels like there's indentions so actual texture this painting was done on a piece of wood if you were to go touch that wood it would feel rough and bumpy and scratchy those are all texture words actual texture it really does feel that way this artist used so much paint that the paint came out of the the um, it's on the canvas and it sticks out like bumpy and rough and you can feel it on the canvas. It's like a Van Gogh. He used so much paint that it would stick out and have this texture. Look at this one. This one's done with a palette knife and oil paint. And if you put your fingers across it, it's going to be bumpy. These are all texture words. This is some embossment done. We're actually going to do a piece of embossing at some point. All of these pieces that would be bumpy and rough and hard or pokey or scratchy. <clears throat> so this is actual texture. How about that hamburger? I'm feeling bumpy and smooth and holy and rough and woven and rigid and jagged. All those words are great texture words. This one has all these little holes poked into it. So this is actual texture. The other thing that we do as artists is sometimes we're on a flat piece of paper, we're trying to make it look like it has texture, okay? So when you make it, you draw in a way that looks like it's bumpy or smooth or hard, it's called visual texture or implied texture. You can use either of those words. Here's an example. This artist is drawing in a way to make it look bumpy or smooth or rough or like that um, piece of wood or foamy. So that artist is able to make it look like it has texture even though when I touch, if I were to touch that piece of paper of that real art, it would be smooth. It wouldn't have the bumps, but that artist can make it look like it has bumps. Look at all of these ways to draw a hand. I see pokey and grassy and bumpy. 
Do you see the difference? One is actual texture, and in printmaking, we are going to get something to have actual texture, but I also want you to think of implied texture, how to draw something that looks like it's bumpy. Ooh, it looks hairy. Those fingers look like they have fur on it and they look like they're cracking. This is all implied texture and then we'll get into printmaking. So while you're working on this mandala, can you do at least one little row that looks like it has texture? Maybe you'll draw in a way that, maybe I'll draw, maybe I'll try to draw something like it has the wood. It has the little knots in it. Try to figure out a way to draw something that looks bumpy or jagged or smooth or wavy. So see what I did there? I tried to use lines that will look like they have texture. So that's called implied texture. And there's a million ways to do it. It's easier when you're like using a, um, a pencil and you can really get into the value of things. So that's called implied texture. We talked about implied texture and you didn't know we were talking about it last week when we looked at this. Isn't that amazing? That looks like her hair is smooth. Her eyebrows feel, feel kind of pokey and bushy. But if I touch that piece of paper, it's going to be smooth. But this artist was amazing at implied texture. My boy Gavin had an art project last week where he had to try to draw with his pencil, he had to draw hair and he had to make it look with the value kind of like this, like it was smooth or bumpy. And it was an, I was helping him with it. It was an interesting um, assignment. So Try to draw something on there that looks pokey or bumpy or furry or any of anything like those things would, would be texture words. <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of talking. Does anybody have something they want to show me that, that is looking like texture or show their mandala? Let's see, beautiful sage. <laughs> You have the face of an angel, I'm telling you. Unmute you. Yeah, do some hair. Oh, some hair. Pull that forward a little bit. That's fantastic. Look at her mandala. Oh, these patterns are great. Good job. I see broken lines and pokey lines and straight lines, and I love your colors. Good job, beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else have something they want to share? Oh my goodness, I think we have a cat that wants to share. Oh, hello cat. Yes, <laughs> he has texture. Oh, he has texture. There's texture. This is real live, living texture as we know it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, texture show over Show my there. mandala. Yes, show me, Sadie. Oh, fantastic. <gasps> Look at this. You weren't even thinking of it, but some of those lines in there feel pokey and bumpy. Fantastic. Oh, Sadie, amazing. Wait, uh, how many foam squares was everyone supposed to get? Um, four, but we it's kind of excessive. You might not need every one of them. Did you get four? I got three. What the heck? How would I do that to you? I am so I think, sorry. There might be some missing. Oh, I. you know what? Sometimes I stay up pretty late putting together these kits, so I apologize. <laughs> Look around, no. if not, you, you won't need all of them. Oh gosh, we have another puppy. That texture feels what way? Oh, they have a dog also. Oh my gosh, this has become show and tell with our dogs and our cats. That's amazing. How does it feel? Tell me how that one is feeling, Ryder. I can't unmute you for some reason. See if you can hit the button. Oh, can I have that puppy? I need to come over and get a dose of that. Oh, how does he feel when you touch him? Oh, he's so cute. Feels like sheep wool. Sheep wool. Ooh, is it kind of bumpy or soft or wooly? Oh, I love it. He's so cute. That's a great thing to be quarantined with. Perfect. Thank you for sharing. 
Anybody else have something they want to share? This cute Matthew has something to share. Oh, put that up close, handsome. That's pretty cool. What's going on over there? I'll un I got you unmuted. Go ahead. I can hear you. Let's see it, Matthew. Oh, oh nice. Look at the shading you're putting into that. That is fantastic. Elements of line, elements of texture. We got so much going on. All right, let's move on to our printmaking. It gets pretty fun, by the way. Hi, Mac, where'd you go? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I had you, had you for a minute. Bring it back in. Hi. Uh, I tried to do some tree bark and some waves and stuff. Oh, yes, tree bark, what? That's difficult. I love the spirals sticking out. Mm -hmm. My goodness, so fantastic. You know radial symmetry through a mandala. Wow. I'm hoping some of this vocabulary sticks in your brains. So anybody else want to share something? <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are nuts. I don't know how this turned into this, but we got dogs. <laughs> it's dog show and tell today. Hi, how's it going? Ooh, what's this you got there? I'm trying to end oh. <laughs> I love it. Ooh, when you touch it, is it smooth? It's a bit bumpy on some parts, and it's smooth and a bit rough. Rough, bumpy, smooth. These are all so fantastic. And this is the dog. How is that dog feeling? <laughs> Fluffy. <laughs> Fluffy. Fluffy. Oh, so cute. Uh, tell me the name of your friend one more time. I forgot it. I'm so ready. Clyde. Bobby. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Gotcha. So cute. Okay, thanks, Clyde. pets. Thanks for showing up, pets. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but this became pet show and tell. So we better bring this one in, and then we better get to printmaking. What in the heck is here? Look at those eyes. Holy smokes, Gray. Whoa. <laughs> how is that one feeling? How's the texture on your cat? Miss Luella. So soft. Ooh, it makes me want to cuddle right up. Hi, Drew, back there. Hello. What are you making us for dinner? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> no? For dinner. Ooh, smart. Smart one. We make dinner. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to get with it. Oh, okay, like friends. No, it was two nights. <laughs> I love your families. It's so fun to jump into your family rooms and feel like I'm a part of it. Perfect. Okay, friends, are we ready to move on to our... Uh, oh, okay, friends, really, we have got to get going on art. So, wow, now we have a gecko, and I have a feeling that's going to feel a little differently than the this cat. This is our pet Thor. Yeah, he has a bumpy skin. Bumpy, scaly, rough. Yeah, oh, awesome. This is a great texture day with all of our animals. Thank you. Ooh, if you could draw the texture on his skin, wouldn't that be fantastic? Oh, yeah. Really. Um, can I show you something? <laughs> okay, Nora, real quick. Okay. Okay. I need to tell you that I just lost a tooth right here. Oh my goodness, you are so cute with your teeth or without your teeth. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your beautiful face. I love it. Okay, friends, let me show you the next step because I think you're going to love it. I want to show you a little bit about printmaking. This is a woodcut. And when my boy Gavin broke his leg, he was stuck home and he stayed with my mom while I was teaching and he created this. He used a really sharp tool. See that? See how that little corner is really sharp. And when you go like this in wood, it digs it right out. But I was a little nervous to send everybody home with knives, so I figured out a different way to do printmaking. But the, way, the reason it's the same is this is creating texture. It's creating actual texture. It's actually creating grooves so that when you put ink on it, it doesn't take the ink because it's going down and the ink sits on top. So he drew this little shark, cut it all out when he went really deep around here, Oop, all the way around. So with that line, 
Do you think when he prints on it, it's going to be white or black if he uses black ink? Think about that. You take a brayer, you roll it in ink, and you roll that whole board up and you load it up with black ink, okay? And the ink doesn't go down in those grooves. So actually, that groove is going to be white, not black. Watch what happens. He took this piece of paper, okay? And he lined it up right on top of that board. And he rubbed and rubbed, and he probably used a tool to rub. And when he pulled it apart, look what happens. It's black everywhere that he didn't dig. So where he made the groove becomes white. Now that's important because we're gonna do this on our foam. Wherever you make a groove on your foam will show up as a white line. The more interesting your lines and your designs and your patterns are, the more interesting um, that texture is going to show up in your print, okay? Let's, let me show you how this works because this is, this is where it gets so fun. I talked to you about a radial symmetry. We're going to create one fourth of a radial symmetry. In other words, it's like I'm going to take this piece and put your eyes on Miss Jill for a second. This is important. It's like I'm going to cut it into fourths. Okay? Ooh, ooh, there's four squares. And I'm going to take one of these squares and I'm going to just print a fourth of that mandala. Let me show you what that means. You can do this with me, friends. Set your sketchbook aside. You can keep it around so you can see it, but I gave you a great big piece of paper. Can you all find the great big white piece of paper? It's not the paper that's in your sketchbook. It's a free paper like this. Can you all kind of hold it up so I know you're with me? It's not the foam, okay? It's not the... Um, I also gave you all these papers. These are for doing the printmaking on them, the smaller squares and the yellow stack. It's the big paper, and that's a scratch paper. So this is for us to think through our designs. Go ahead and take one of these foam pieces. This is what we'll be doing the carving in, is the foam. Be really careful that your fingernails don't get into it or you don't bend it, because that will make a dig and it, it will then change your design. So that you kind of, they're kind of fragile, so be gentle with that paper. And, and I'm going to use a Sharpie so you can see. If you want to use a pencil, you can. I'm going to do, I'm gonna trace that square onto my paper. You see it okay? This is my practice gig before I actually start carving. I'm going to practice on my paper. And I'm going to practice by drawing a design that's like a fourth of my mandala. I know that's a lot to think about. So watch Miss Jill. This is how, I'm hoping you can see that okay. If I start in the corner, so everybody start your design in the corner of the square. And then do those lines kind of like you just did on your mandala, moving out. It's like you're starting from just a corner and you're going to fill the whole thing with your interesting lines. They might be dots, they might be broken lines, they might be curves. <clears throat> And I'm going to fill the entire square. I started in a corner and I moved out. Can you see how that's like a fourth of a mandala? So I'm gonna create that design moving out. I'm just on the paper, I'm not yet on my, on my phone. I haven't heard from my cute Lowry's for a minute. How are the Lowry's doing? Hi. I can't see any of your faces. <laughs> Talk to me. Hi, Hope. Oh, there's a good face. I love that face. Is this yeah, making sense? Mm -hmm. You doing okay? Uh-huh. 
I think you're gonna like this print making. It's pretty fun. Oh yeah, I did it before you did it. Yeah, no, you've done some printmaking. This is different because I can't give you all tools. I can't give you all brayers. So we're doing it with markers. It's kind of fun. Thanks for being here, Katie. Yeah. Yeah. All right, friends. I'm still at it, and Gus is really certain that he has something to say. Do you need to go out or what? You going to talk to us? He has funny eyes, that guy. After I have my design figured out, tip it up. All right, this is where the fun happens. All right, I'm gonna take, I, I don't wanna, if I stick that in there, where did my tape go? Then that will make a mark, so we don't wanna do that. Okay, I'm just gonna tape it, okay? Okay, I'm gonna start with a little square. This is called an embossing tool. Mine's used, it's out of my studio, it's covered in paint. You guys all got brand new ones, so please hold on to these because we're gonna do clay next week and this is great for making texture in your clay. We're also gonna do an embossing um, deal next, I don't know, in a couple lessons and you'll use that for that. So don't lose this guy. Please look at yours carefully. Pull yours out and you'll notice that there's that little round ball on each side, okay? If you will, pick the bigger side, okay? Pick the bigger side because the, sometimes the really thin one will cut right through your phone. Got it? Okay, and after we have that, we're gonna look at a chicken. What on earth is going on? <laughs> chicken! <laughs> chicken! <laughs> okay, you're so funny. Why is this the funniest class? This chicken is cute. Next, they're probably gonna be in one of their goats. Yeah. You didn't know we were going to the zoo today, did you? Okay, back to embossing. Take the bigger tip, okay? Thanks for the chicken. <laughs> Take the bigger tip and watch Miss Jill. You're not gonna see it very well because it doesn't show with a mark, it shows with a dent, it shows with texture. I'm going to try to copy this texture and I'm going to push really hard. You have to push pretty hard, not too hard to rip it. You'll rip it if you push too hard. So don't rip it, you just have to push hard enough. And the reason you wanna do that is those are the lines that will show up in your print as white. I'm trying to get the angle so you yeah. can see. If I touch it, it is an indention. Hi Nora, yeah. are you okay? Yeah, I just need to show you something. Okie dokie, what's going on? Ooh. Wow. It says, it says this is for Jill. Oh, Nora, I love you. Why are you so kind to me? <laughs> if I was with you, I would give you the biggest hug, okay? With your toothless smile. <laughs> I love you. Thank you. Try this. Did you get one of these, friend? Pull this out. Okay? And let's let's try this. Ooh, we've got some texture with Eris and Eric. Fantastic. Look at the texture in that cat. I see it. It's amazing. I'm trying to unmute you. We can't Hi. hear you. Oh, I can hear you now. Tell me about it, Eris. Um, it's a cat egg. <laughs> Listen, you might want to do that in one of your squares. So let's get going on this so we can we can carve. Is every will everybody show me that their little square that you're working on. Are we into the carving of it before we take a break? Let's see if we can get that carved. Oh, good. Nice, Bobby and Matthew and Gray. Oh, great, awesome, I can see your texture. Luella, Sage, nice, perfect, Natalie. Yes, see if you can get that carved. Let's do the first one before, before we break, okay? Oh, ooh, Sophia, that's amazing. I gotta bring some of these forward. That is, hold that up again, sweetheart. That's amazing. Matthew, hold yours up next to there. Yes, hold it up. Can you get it a little closer? Ooh. So you should be able to fill with your fingers the texture. Nice. Awesome, Mac. Hello. Mingle it so I can see the texture popping out. 
There it is. There it is. Perfect. Yep. Okay. How's my beautiful Gabby? Are you getting yours carved, sweetie? Gabby, let's see what, oh, good job. Yes, perfect, look at the dog. You guys look your eyes up to Gabby's dog. Oh my goodness, that's gonna be a really interesting print. <gasps> You're working with that tool so carefully. Are you liking it? You enjoying that little tool? Good job, Sunshine, you are doing fantastic. So when I finish, Oh my gosh, I love each of you so much. I wish I, I wish you were all in my studio. Someday you will be, we can hang out. So you're gonna wanna fill the whole piece. You need to go all the way to the corner, just like we did on our little practice guy, okay? <clears throat> and the more bumps and the more grooves makes more lines and more texture and it makes printmaking a little more interesting. The whole idea of printmaking is so you can do the same thing over and over again. So once I have a design in that little piece, I can print from this several times and make a whole bunch of art. That's why I gave you several pieces of paper. And when they, did, when they kind of um, first came up with printmaking, they had to do it in order to, for, to make our newspapers. And they would do letters. And when they had a story to tell, they would line all the letters up to say what the story was. And then they would ink it up, put the newspaper on, ink it up, put the newspaper on. And they were able to make several newspapers from one of the printmaking. That's where it started before we had printers and presses and all the things. There's a lot of ways to do printmakers or printmaking or t-shirts that have designs. That's screen printing. There's etching, there's lithography, there's woodcuts. So we're just trying one kind of printmaking. Um, and I'm about ready to try a print. Um, let's see here. Give me a thumbs up if you're about ready to try a print. It looks like Sage has got one of her little designs up. Miss Lexi, awesome. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, gorgeous girls, let's see it. <laughs> she has to crawl across the table. Hi. Hi. How, how's your designs coming? Good. Good. Here's mine. Can okay, okay, yes, yes, yes. Are you Here's using mine. your little embosser? Good job, Ms. Uh -huh. Lucy. Good, do you like carving? Are you yeah. using? Are you using this little tool, the embosser tool? Show, your, show me your, yeah, perfect. Awesome. Okay, so we're just, thanks girls. Yes, so often we learn so much from each other. I try hard to pull everybody up so we can kind of watch it. We're looking at five o'clock. Take a minute to, if you need to keep finishing this or if you need to stand up and stretch or use the restroom, grab a drink of water. Um, and have your mint, whatever, do a little wiggle, wiggle for just a second. And then we're doing, then we got to get into our print making. So, um, Eris, let me see that, sweetie. Okay. Oh, nice. Good job. Yep. It's a gap. Now, when you touch it, does it dig down pretty deep? You might have to do one more layer on it. Go over that one more time with your little embossing tool. Okay. You want to make sure it's deep enough. You're doing great, Sunshine. This is where it's tricky for me not to be in the room with you because when I'm in the room with you, I can walk around and touch, touch it. But you want to make sure when you feel it, you feel actual texture. So stand up. If you're in my studio, I would say stand up, do a little stretch, wiggle, wiggle. Um, who's gonna who's gonna lead us in some sort of a wiggle? Who wants to wiggle? Oh, I feel like Ryder has a wiggle. Hi, Ryder. Okay, everybody, do what Ryder's doing. He's stretching it out. I'm trying to unmute you. There you go. Okay. Ooh, yes, I got you. Stretch and stretch. These are good. These are good. These are good. What else? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, across the arm. Yes, I like. I like. And the other one, yeah. Now, if we're gonna stretch that way, yeah, go backwards. Whoa, you are limber boy. <laughs> Good job. Thanks, handsome. Awesome. 
Now we are standing on our head. <laughs> Thank you, Jeffries. Okay. <laughs> okay, just do a little movement so you know the blood comes back into your hands and your arms. A little wiggle. Okie dokie. Here goes May. Okay, Maisie, what are you gonna do? She's leaning over, stretching her arms up all the way down. Holy smokes, this girl is limber. I don't know if I can do all the moves you got. June is on her head, upside down. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jeffries. Perfect. Sam, you are working hard. Okay, go ahead and drink or have your little mint. Have a drink of water. I'm ready to do some making. Have you done a little wiggle? Have you moved your hands? Did you stand up? Move around a little bit. All right. So um, let's go on to printmaking. Make sure, my friends, that you have you have some water to dip your sponge in, and you for sure will need a paper towel. So here's how it goes. Are you ready? I'm going to start with just one of these pieces of paper. It's the smaller square paper, okay? And I'm gonna put this right here. And before anything, I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm gonna try to find the very middle mark, the middle top to bottom, the middle side to side, right here, target in the middle. See that? Just need a little mark and it's gonna be a guideline for when you print on that paper. So go ahead and get that paper set up so when you start the printmaking. So it's not the, it's not these papers, those are rectangles. That's for our other piece. It's the square one and you should have four. I gave you four because I gave you four little squares. So you really could do this process four times with these little guys. You could do it a million times because once you carve it, you can use that thing over and over. So after I have that middle down, now I'm going to cover the entire piece with marker. And it's important you use the markers I gave you because they're washable. If you're using different markers, make sure they have the word washable on them. That's gonna be important when it comes to printmaking. So I'm going to fill in all the parts. And you'll notice that it doesn't go where the groove is. So you can fill it to the groove, but it won't take it. And that is going to show up on your, your paper as a white mark. And you'll want to fill the entire, entire piece. All the white spots need to be covered in marker. Even if you didn't do a radial design, I saw some of you do your own designs, which were so fantastic. Just make sure that you fill them all in. <clears throat> all the way around. I wanna show you an example. <clears throat> of one, whoa, where are they? Ah, oh, my computer's tipping. Okay, here's an example of one I did. <laughs> As an example, and I lost it. Okay, here's one that I cut out and I printed from several times. So put your eyeballs on the screen while I just do this little demo. What I'm going to do, and this is the process that is a little bit tricky. You carved it, then you put marker on it, and then you're going to wet the paper and print. Watch Miss Jill, look up here. I printed this one time, one time, and I'm gonna take the corner that you started and I'm gonna line it up by that dot and there's one print. Then I'm gonna wipe it off, do it again, and print again another print. Then I'm gonna wipe it off and do it again, 
and keep printing until I have a full tile. And this is a radial mandala from one print. And you're going to basically turn it each time that you print it. That's why that little dot in there was important. So watch Miss Jill, friends. This is the tricky part because a lot of people want to put water on the foam. If I put water on that foam, then it will all drip off and the print isn't going to work. Okay, so do you see me okay? So what I'm going to do, and this is the other part that is tricky, is deciding how much water you need. That's why you have a lot of papers and a lot of tries, so you might not get it right the first time. Too much water will make it smear all over. Not enough water, you won't get a print. So I'm gonna take my sponge, watch how much water, and try to get a, try to get a feel for how much water I've got here. If I take it straight from here to my paper, look how it's dripping, that's too much. If I squish it all the way out, that's not quite enough. Watch Miss Jill. I'm gonna saturate it in there. I'm gonna hold it up and kind of give it a half squeeze. That's gonna be just right, okay? I don't want it too drippy. If it's dripping all over the table, when I go from my bowl to my paper, then you have too much water. Now watch what I do. I take that sponge and I'm just going to wet the paper that I'm printing on. I'm not gonna wet the, the foam. It's gotta be the paper so that it can absorb the marker. And I'm just going to do it in one print. So I just am doing that one corner of the paper. I didn't fill the whole paper. I just did the one corner. So now I'm gonna take that little guy and the point that I started on, that inside point is going to touch that little dot. Watch Miss Jill, friends. I'm gonna take that little guy off and I'm gonna line it up with the dot and I'm gonna push. There we go, and I have my first print. Can you see? I have done printmaking, woohoo, I did it. So after I have one print, now I need to take the paper towel and wipe off the foam. If the foam is wet, because this was wet, when you put marker on it again, it won't stick to it. So I did one print, I'm gonna let this just be, I'm gonna take my paper towel and wipe off the foam. I'm not, not the paper, the foam. I just wanna make sure that's dry. Now I'm going to do this again. It's four times total. So try to stick with the same colors every time and it will create a perfect mandala. Okay, so now I've got this guy. And I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to tip it in that same direction. And now I'm going to repeat those colors. And I can look over here to see what colors we used. Kind of a funny way to do printmaking. I wish I had a great big press and all of you were in here and we had real wood and real tools and all the things, but we have foam and we have embossment tools and these, this makes it safe for all this to just do from home and still get the same idea as a woodcut because we cut down into to make our grooves. Oh, let's see. Think.
You want to watch Miss Jill's process again? How is everybody doing? Give me a thumbs up or a thumb down because I can't see your voices. Sophia's got a thumbs up. Did you get a print work to work? Maybe kind of. Sage? Ooh, pull it forward. Okay, so let's look at this because this is a learning process for everybody. Okay, hold that up again. See this? See this of Miss Sophia's? What do you think went wrong, Miss Sophia? What needs to be different next time? Can you say, okay, let's undo you. Let's see here. Okay. I can't unmute you for some reason. Can you reach over and hit unmute? There you go. Let's see yours, Matthew. What what happened? What would you do differently next time? I don't know. What do you think, Sophia? I don't know if I put too much water or too little water. I wish I was sitting right with you. This is the tricky part about teaching like this. If it was dripping wet, it, it looks, I kind of feel like it wasn't enough water. Try it with more water next time and actually try it right now. Put water in that same print and put it back down and see if it will pull more off. See if you can line it up. Okay. Just, just wet that corner and let's see what happens. If there's still, and that's also a thing that you have to really make sure you use juicy amounts of marker. You don't want to just do one line of it. You kind of have to juice it up because that's your ink, right? So wet that and see if you can line it up and see if that print will go back on. I'm doing the same thing. Yeah, you put too much water on yours. Indeed. Let's see it. Mm -hmm. All right. Ugh, I, I don't know if I didn't have enough ink this time, but. Okay, ink it back up, little Missy. Do, do, yep. Okay, so now we're gonna try again by inking it back up, water on the paper, and print. So I will show that one more time. Look at my amount of ink, it's pretty juicy. And now the, the water goes on my next corner. Be careful not to get water on what's already printed and take a swipe a few times with that. And now I'm going to line that corner up with that dot again. And also, it's important to push really hard with your fingers. You really have to put some pressure on the foam when you're making a print all the way around. You can't just drop it and think it's done. I'm really pushing a lot all the way around. I'm massaging all that foam all the way around. And look, mine showed up darker the next time because I did a little better with really pushing the foam. You're trying to get the color pressing into the paper and the water is going to allow for that movement. Has anybody come up with a print that's working? This is a tricky process to teach over a computer. Can you show me little Miss Sage? Let's see it. Hey, 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 you did it. Hold it up close, little rainbow girl. That looks like tie-dye. My goodness, that is so fantastic. Yes. Also, I noticed that this looks bumpy, but it's not on your shirt. So that would be implied texture or visual texture. Ooh, I love it. Did you know that that is printmaking on your shirt? Did you know that when you go to the rack at Target or wherever you're shopping and you see a whole bunch of shirts lined up, it's because they created one screen with the design, they inked it, pressed it, inked it, pressed it, inked it, pressed it, and that's how they make a whole bunch of millions of shirts from one. It's called, it's, it's called screen printing. It's also a kind of printmaking. Fantastic. Anybody else want to show me what she got? Hey, little Miss Bobby, bring it on in. Let's see it. <gasps> what? No way. Are you kidding me? Everybody put your eyeballs over here. <gasps> oh my gosh. That is the real deal. Hold on. I gotta take a picture of that. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. That is so vibrant. How did you nail that on the first one? I can't hit unmute. If you can hit unmute on your computer. Sometimes I don't know why it's, I think it's your setting. There you go. How did that happen on your first one? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't either because Wowsy Pants, this is 
this is all of us learning. So if your print didn't show up perfectly the first time, be patient with yourself because it's a hard process to get a feel for. Thank you, Bobby. That's so cool. You got one more of that one. So fantastic. Anybody else having success or frustration or questions or do we, anybody need to talk to me about this process and tell me how it's going? Ooh, what's going on here? Let's see that. Whoa. Nice. Good job, writer. Interesting texture you have there. Awesome. You got it. Again, I can't unmute you if you want to hit the unmute. I just did, I think. Somehow you, um, yeah, you nailed it. You got two more prints. I do you want to look? Yeah. Is anybody enjoying this process? What would you say? Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. Oh, wow. <gasps> look at the colors on there, Isla. Oh my gosh, these are fantastic. Good job. Thank you for sharing. Are you guys yeah, having fun. fun doing this or no? Ah, this is super fun. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. I love it. Anybody else want to share? Some of you might feel some frustration. Some of you feel exhilarated. It takes patience to kind of nail it. So that's why I gave you four tries, but I want to try, I, don't just jump onto all those. I have one other thing I want to show you from those. Who haven't I heard from from a little while that wants to share? How you doing, Mac? Uh, good. I'm feeling kind of frustrated with the process. because. Thanks for sharing. That's totally valid and legit. This is the first one that I did that, it, it, like, this one doesn't have enough. This one, this one doesn't have enough. This one has um, way too much. This okay. one I, like, rubbed on accident. Yep. And this one also has too much. That bottom one, I think, is perfect because I can see all the lines. You want to be able to see the lines. Too much water over in the corner where there's not enough water. So maybe you need to be more deliberate about your pushing on the back where you rub the back to make sure you hit every corner when you're rubbing that down. Does that make sense? Yeah, I did. And then I tried again and similar thing. And this one came out pretty well. Well, you've got more paper, so keep going. You're doing great. Try it again and... Um, I want to show you, ooh, yes, yes, there you go. That one worked. Thanks for being patient. Yeah, how, um, how are the Lowry's doing, little printmakers over there? <laughs> Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Good. Is anybody getting a print that works? No, Zach has this ice crystals one. Oh my gosh, that's pretty cool. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm trying to help him with that. Love that, Zach. Oh my goodness. How about you? I'm Liz? trying to help show him how to do it. Um, this was my attempt. Ooh, going around. So you're just stuck with one color all the way. Ooh, I love the lines though. Yes, those lines are pretty amazing. So the one that's over smeared probably has too much water. So then you yeah. smear it back. What? That item was not me. Yeah. I don't know. But this is learning, right? This is what we do. We enjoy the process of it and the learning of it. And that's how we're figuring this out. Like Zach's face. <laughs> Hi, Zach. You have a great face. <laughs> She's having lots of fun. Oh, this. how's yours working? Oh, mine's working pretty good. I'm just helping Zach with his because he can figure out how to make the print work. That's because, because you're the nicest cool. sister I know. Those brothers know. are lucky pretty cool. to have you. Pretty much. So patient and kind. I love the way you three work together. It warmed my heart. Thank you. Okay, so friends, friends and friends. Oh, we've got another somebody. Yes, Miss Bobby. Um, I have a question. Go All for right. it. What should we do with this paper? Ooh, thank you. That paper can be used over and over. You can make lots of prints just like Target makes 5 million t-shirts, so you've, it's like you've created the original screen print or the wood print, and you could make a lot. You could wipe it down and try different colors, but let's make a different one. Do you want to try another one? Because I do. Are you ready? I want to show you another technique. How's it going, Charlotte? I haven't heard from you, little Missy. Are you feeling okay or frustrated? Uh, I was so, I, I just had a lot of candy, so I had to go to the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute and honest. Um, I have, I'm making my 
Okay, still working on it. I can't reach. Yeah. Perfect. I would love to show you one more technique, okay, friends? Oh my goodness, I sure love these people. You guys are doing so great. How is this little family doing right here? Hi. <laughs> Let's unmute you. Hit the unmute. Oh, wait. Oh. There we go. I got you. I hear you. Go for it. We just, no, we just had a little meltdown. So we have one upstairs who's really tired and then we are, she's showing me what you're doing. Okay. They're having okay. Hey, here's the deal. Melting down in all of this is totally okay. So melting down is okay. And, and then we just try again and we enjoy the process of carving and pushing and coloring and all the things. Let's try another one that's not so complicated, can we? Can I show you another one? A little missy. Yeah. <laughs> I want to try something different. I sure love your faces. Thank you for being here, Marissa. It's so good to see you. <laughs> I told him my trampoline is really bored and yeah, needs someone to come jump on it, okay? I know. We're coming over. We'll be there. <laughs> Life's a little crazy right now. Okay, friends. So, I want to show you, put your eyeballs on my iPad. I'm not going to share the screen again. I'm just going to pull it up because there's this amazing printmaker named Andy Warhol that you're all going to want to know about because you've all seen his pop prints. Here it is. Can you see me? So this is an Andy Warhol print. And obviously he came after Picasso because Picasso gave him that free ticket to go ahead and do all kinds of art and you don't have to obey any rules. So this is a screen print of Marilyn Monroe. So he does the design in the screen, kind of like a t-shirt. And then he uses these funky, crazy colors. And then he prints it again all over. Look how weird they look. The same print in all the different co <clears throat> colors. This is called pop art. And Andy Warhol is the king of pop art. You may have seen his Campbell's soup um, designs, but look at this guy. This isn't Andy Warhol's, maybe it is, I don't know. Anyway, it's the same idea of one design, lots of different colors, lots of different ways to print. So I, oh, how about the donuts? What's wrong with that? I'm feeling a little hungry right now. So I tried donuts. Look at Miss Jill's. I did one donut and the foam case ran away. What the heck? Oh my goodness sakes. I don't know where it went. It fell or something, but I did one donut and then I did an Andy Warhol style. Check it out. So put your eyes up here. The next one doesn't have to be a radial mandala. It doesn't have to have that radial symmetry. Just do something fun. Do a design, but make sure you include those elements of line that add so much pattern, which will create texture. So notice the little dots I did in the back and the swirlies on the inside. So be thinking positive and negative space, the whole thing, and create some little idea that you can print four times using four different colors and four different ideas. So let's see here. Okay, come on, we gotta look at this one, it's super cute. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, like that, oh yeah. Isn't that a cool design of butterflies? And then look at all the ways to print one design. So put your eyeballs on the screen for a minute. There's the, a butterfly and this, is a kiwi what really simple but that positive and negative space you're filling in the background space as well as the um oh where where's the strawberries wait donuts strawberries is this because i'm hungry isn't that cute a really simple design and since you kids understand positive and negative space you will make sure your background is just as interesting as the foreground and you'll add lines. Oh, bikes, what's wrong with bikes? Okay, darling, so cute. And you could print that bike over and over again. So what you'll probably want to do, just like we did before, is I took my scratch paper, that great big paper, 
And I'm gonna take my little square and I'm going to trace it. Do, 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 do. And I'm going to come up with my design here first. I feel like we need some texture in the back. Remember the more lines, and that's why we spent all that time on our lines. So come up with your design idea first with your pencil or a marker or a Sharpie. And then after you've drawn it once here, you should feel pretty confident with your embossing tool to jump onto the foam. The foam is not forgiving. You can't erase it. As soon as you press it in, it's there, right? So that's why I like to draw it first. And then I'm going to take my embossment um, tool. I got to take my little foam up. And I'm going to carve in after I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to take the bigger point again. And then I'm going to carve in. Make sure I'm pushing hard. You don't want to rip it, but if you want an if you want it to show up as a white line, you have to push pretty hard to make that groove. And then I start the coloring and I'm going to print it four different ways. I'll keep this guy up here so you can have an idea. Oh my goodness, what have we got here? Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, you girls, this is like, okay, Lexi, put your face up here, Miss Alexis and Natalie. Yeah, show me your cute stuff. Oh my gosh. Hey, here's the deal. You girls are printmakers and this was hard because it's the, is this the first time you've done printmaking? Yeah, this is our first time. Again. And you blew it out of the park? Like, what's going on? Do you have magical powers or what? I don't expect your first one to be perfect. We're all just kind of trying. And it is. Oh, my gosh. Are you girls having fun? Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. I want everybody to kind of check in with your energy. Thank you, girls. Amazing. Check in with your energy and see if you feel peaceful, if you feel like some of the stress has come away. Um, that's really what art does for it. It's, it's such a healer. So when we're having those frustrating emotions or anger or sadness or whatever, usually when we tap into this space, we have an overwhelming sense of calm that comes over us. And it's very healthy to be here. So. Um, is anybody feeling that when I say that? Does, do you see what I'm saying? Yes or no? Give me a thumbs up if you can relate to feeling not stressed in this. Okay, Bradley's and Sage. And, and if some of the, oh yes, girl, thanks, Bobby and Cash. If some of the um, moments feel stressful, that's okay too. And try to let go of an outcome. If it doesn't become perfect, enjoy the carving enjoy the coloring and just keep trying it and it's pretty exhilarating when it does show up and it does work occasionally hey miss gabby gabby i haven't seen your face for a minute hi how's the printing going are you trying the printmaking <laughs> you are just this little tiger who is so big in art Ooh, show me what you've got going i gotta try to unmute you okay you're no you're not you're just hiding it have you tried any prints that work yet? Wait, I want to show you a painting that I did a long time ago. Do it. I love it. I love that you're wearing a unicorn. I have you unmuted. I can hear you. Go ahead. Just show it to me. I can hear you. Oh, my goodness. Look at you. It's gorgeous. It's a guy my sister. 
you have the biggest artist heart. Thank you for sharing. You're doing so great. Are you having fun over there? <laughs> I love your smile. Oh my gosh. A unicorn is a perfect thing for you to wear, by the way. You are a unicorn. <laughs> All right, my friends. I had my Lowry's, I believe, said, had a hand up. Oh my goodness. Wait a second. I got to check this real fast. Hey, back to the Bradleys. You were frustrated for a minute. How are you feeling now? Can you unmute it? Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Whoa, whoa. It won't unmute. Can you hit that? Oh yeah, talk. Yeah, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to unmute your own mouth, right? By talking. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you guys are figuring it out. Oh my gosh. Does it feel satisfying when a print shows up? Yeah. yeah, I feel not great. There was only one that was perfect, but I really liked, but. You know what? This is the process of printmaking. Is it some work and some don't, but we just have to enjoy the process. And I love that you hung in there and you stayed with it. You were frustrated for a minute, but you were like, I'm gonna figure this out. That is so fantastic. That says a lot about you kids. I love it learning as we move it's amazing okay oh somebody's trying to call me zip it who we got here hi miss hi harrison's <laughs> hit that unmute for me oh seriously oh my gosh can you talk miss isla what's going on here um I did like a leaf pattern. Yes. A bunch of leaves. Okay. But like magical leaves. Oh, I feel the magic, sunshine. And this, the magic comes from you and your artist's heart. You are magic. That's why those leaves are magic. Did you know that? Yeah. That's an extension of you. Amazing. <laughs> Good job. Have you tried? Are you, how are you doing, writer? Feel okay about it? Yeah, I'm still working on my other one. Ooh, love it! Heck yeah! Another one? Yeah. Awesome! Thank you. Yes. Ooh, look at you, Mac. Oh my gosh. You stayed I, did, it. I did one with, of a fat guy. <laughs> awesome. Good job. Staying with it. And my Lowry's, my goodness, I ignored you. Your hand was up and then I got distracted. I'm so oh, rude. Okay, Hi. Zach wanted to ask. So okay, to give it okay. up. Okay, um, is this our last thing or will we do more? Um, well, what do you want to do? Are you ready for dinner? Well, well, he doesn't have anything to do. He wants to go play video games and he's wondering if he has to keep doing this. Oh. But I think we should, we should keep doing this. So we I would love for you to keep doing this because you can play video games all day long, but you only get my fantastic face for a few more minutes. How would you ever want to leave my fantastic face, Mr. Zach? Come on, tell me how it, tell me the truth. <laughs> I'm teasing. You know that? This I'm is like sure video games are much more interesting to look at, but that's looking rad. Is that Luke's? Yeah. Yeah, nice, pal. That's awesome. I have to scream. Yeah, good job. Yes! Yes, yes, I haven't heard oh, from my cute friends, Eris and Eric. How's it going over here? What are you working on? Hi. Hi, hi. I feel like you're painting. Are we painting and doing markers? That's great. I don't care what you do. Are you enjoying it? Did you know there's a thing of printmaking that you can do a print, and the artists do this often, where they'll create a print using a woodcut or an etch, and then they'll go in and they'll hand paint on top of it. So that's called multimedia, using several things on one. Um, I used to work for a printmaker, and he would create these great big metal etchings, and he used acid to, um, that's what carved it. it. It would etch down and make the design. Um, Let's see. So then my job in college, I would go these great big metal plates and I would roll and roll these big 
the ink and I'd put them through this big press with the paper and then I would hand watercolor how he told me to do it. And he would make a whole bunch of prints that way. So that's why printmaking is amazing because you can make one piece of artwork, okay? And sell it for, I don't know, what if you did amazing work and you sold it for $5,000? One big oil painting. But these printmakers will create a design and print it over and over again, and then maybe do a hundred prints and sell each print for a thousand dollars. Now do the math: thousand dollars, a hundred times. All of a sudden, that guy's into the big bucks. <laughs> so printmaking is something the artists enjoy doing too, because it is its own. Oh, we got. Okay, Lowry's no. <laughs> it is an original piece of art, but it's created from one. one so I made, I made a lot of these. Okay. And I made them in different colors. So basically okay. I just copied the same thing but over and over again until I had no more colors to use. Okay. You're a printmaker. You're using one design and several colors or several prints. So yeah. now you can yeah. go out on the corner of your street and sell each of those for a hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Then you're going to come thank me because you are a famous artist who does printmaking. You're welcome. Good job. And you will be glad that you stayed with printmaking rather than playing video games. It's always the right answer. How are the Jeffreys doing? Hi, I lost a couple of you. Unmute. I got you. spilled water everywhere, so we're cleaning it up. Oh, dear. Who's been cleaning? Okay, now you're cleaning and you're washing floors and you're cleaning toilets. No, don't do all those things. Just clean up your area. Are you doing okay with your prints, Sadie? Not really. You're going, okay. That I, Sometimes this can be a frustrating process. And I, like I said, sometimes it's hard for me not to be in with you to kind of put my hands on it and help you. But I'm seeing you guys work through it. I'm pretty impressed with this crowd. You guys are pretty amazing. Anybody have... I am talking so much and just jabbering away, but doing the same process of my little strawberry, kind of like my donut, printing it four times in Andy Warhol style, where I color the... Wait, what are we doing? I am doing an Andy Warhol style, so I've created a little design Wait, what? 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 Who says what? Me, because we were cleaning all the water up, so... Okay. Um, put, put your eyes up here, Jeffries. This is Andy Warhol style. Now you're creating a design, and you're, you're printing the same thing four different ways. So instead of doing the radial mandala, look at that bike. This is the original artist that I... Oh, look how cute. Aren't those fun colors? Okay. So, it's the same design. But in different times. colors. So that, that's our buddy oh, no. Andy Warhol. So he did one and created this fantastic screen print of Marilyn Monroe. And then he printed it over and over. Wow. So try, so that, so um, we're just trying a simple design, a donut. You you can come up with simple design because you now know positive and negative space and the element of line and the background versus the foreground and all those things. I did a donut one. So I carved one donut and then I printed it four times. And tonight I'm doing a mm -hmm. strawberry. The only thing I'm not good at is, um, is printing it because I, put barely any water on it and it just like goes everywhere. It does not. You probably need a little more water maybe. I don't know. And pushing really hard, when you push really hard on that foam, that makes a big difference. Uh, a good difference or a bad difference? Oh yeah, it makes it bright. So watch Miss Jill. I'm gonna do one more example, okay? Okay. Okay, so. All right, I'm, I'm making sure that I fill in pretty juicy amounts of marker. And I make sure that I fill the entire place with marker. Okay, and 
after I have it all juiced up and all the corners are filled in. Then here's my white paper. And I'm gonna put a dot in the middle. Okay, watch the amount of water Miss Jill uses. If I take it from here to my paper and it's dripping, that for sure is too much. If I squeeze it about that much and it doesn't have a million drips from my bowl to my paper, that's probably just right. And I'm just going to fill in and I'm gonna wipe it a few times. Still taking a bath. Now watch how much I push on the back. Once I lay it down, I'm really going to press into that foam with my finger, really pushing back and forth. If you're in my studio, I would give you a tool for it, but you're not, so you use your fingers kind of hard. And since I pushed pretty hard, look how much ink came off of that. It almost completely wiped off the foam. All of the ink went into that water. So that's what I'm talking about, Miss Sadie. Does that make sense? Okay, Van Wagnens, what's up? Hi. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Oh, we want to what? show you this. Oh my gosh, put your face under there so I can see it. It actually works. <laughs> yeah, wow. How did, did you enjoy, hey, who's next to you? Is that there was dad, dad, Drew wanted to show you his. Drew's in here. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Drew. You enough water. And oh then, gosh. Give him a second. couple tries. I got water on the first one, second one I did a little, and the, the last one I think I got pretty good. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. This is, I love to see families all working. Great. How are you doing, Handsome? He's working. He's focused. Oh. Isn't this a fun process? I, printmaking is, is pretty fun. You know what? I did this with adults where we would do linoleum. Oh, linoleum. Yeah. Cool. And so, you would take I, you take this piece and it's like so satisfying with this sharp tool and you push it away from you and it digs your oh. little texture and then you print it but you create your you create your idea first right and then um, anyway it it's like <laughs> It's kind of crazy addicting to be quite honest because the the feeling the feeling of of carving through this and there's all I have all these different shapes of tools so some of them are shaped like a U uh -huh. and some are shaped like a V and watch how that just pulls right out of it and then you ink this up then with the brayer and the printmaking ink oh pretty fun kind of addicting <laughs> I love it this is our Fun, um, Drew and Marissa teach over at Corner Canyon and have taught my kids. And I just feel so lucky to be connected to them. This is our, the soccer coach over at the, at the high school and, and Marissa works there too, hi Drew. So here he is, here he is a teacher and he teaches Spanish and he's jumping right in to do printmaking oh, with his sorry. kids, awesome. <laughs> Where's Sage? We got one more. Sage is outside playing with his friends. Oh, okay. Well, when he comes in, wave your hand so I can see him. Okay. Good to see you guys. Thanks for being here. That's so fun for me to see all of you together. It's great. <clears throat> okay. Who? Oh, we've got some of these coming in. I think. Oh, Mac. Hey, that one's working, pal. Nice. Good job, buddy. 
Unmute you one more time. You muted me. I unmuted myself and you muted me. Yeah, we're working on the same button. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. I this love one it. This there. one turned out the best. Then okay. it went up to this one. It was a little too much. Yep. This one was way too much. And this one was, was just right. Like, so this is the process of printmaking. We just practice and practice over and over until we dial it in, right? Dial it in. Awesome. Yeah. You're learning. I'm so proud of you, Mac. Oh my goodness. These, you kids are, you just amaze me all the time. And I want to see my little friend, Sage, come here. Let's see it. Oh, whoa. Look at this. Amazing. I got to unmute you. Where are you? Oh, look at your lines. Do you want to talk about it for a second? So, like, these three were good, but this one was, like, one of the best in this one. Interesting. And was it, did it change because of how much water you used? Yeah. Yeah. And Interesting. This one was a little too much water, and then the rest were really good. This one was really, really good. Amazing! They look so great. So what's interesting is you start making a judgment as an artist that, oh, I like this amount of water, or this feels too much, or this feels like it's not enough. And so you start creating your art based on that judgment of that. And sometimes you'll find that, you know what? I like how it's look, looking when I use way too much water and it swirls in some weird direction and it works out. So sometimes the things that we think are mistakes come out as being really fascinating. So And I tried this one to be a flower. Ooh, I love it. Oh my goodness. So friends, I've given you, thanks for sharing. Oh my gosh, hold those And up. I made this one because I love Frozen. Frozen? Tell me about that. Where's your inspiration? Hold the other one up for me. Hold, um, up, hold both like of them up next to each other. Frozen 2. And so I thought since I like Frozen, I could do a Frozen 1. Oh my gosh, it's like Frozen. Yay! Isn't it fun how we get inspiration from lots of different things? <laughs> it's awesome. Um, so I have left you, my friends, with I have, you should have four of the squares. So I, I did a radio mandala and then I did the Andy Warhol one and you have two more squares and two more papers to really do whatever you want. If you want, if you're loving that mandala type, try to do it one more time. I also gave you a big piece, okay? And I'm hoping you spend a lot of time on that great big one to create um some something let's see where that speaker went hold on so i created on my scratch paper i take that again my bigger piece and i trace it maybe a couple of times and come up with the design before I start digging into this, keeping in mind that the most interesting designs are the ones with the most texture and lines and patterns. And after I create the design, then I start carving it and printing. And now this gives you a way to print on different colors. Maybe it's going to show up differently. I promise it will on yellow or cream. And then I put in, I think there's four whites in there too. So then take some time on that one and it should line up when you go to print. It should line up kind of right in the middle. And when you go to do that print, real, you got to make sure the whole thing is wet and then really push. Take your time to massage the whole thing into it when it comes time to print. And you might not finish that in these next few minutes, but I just wanna tell you what you can do with the supplies I gave moving through the week or after this, or you, you get to do it however you want. And this little cutie has something great to say. Hi. <laughs> All you have to do is see your smile and that's like enough for me. Oh, really? Okay, so funny that we should bring it up. It says be brave. It says be brave. 
Oh my gosh, Gabby. So did you use the big piece, the big foam? Okay, you blow my socks off every time. I was just barely giving the directions of what to do on that big one. And Shazam, she already has a full piece already created, already fantastic. Look at her lines, look at her positive and negative space. She's put words into it. Yes! Now listen, Miss Gabby, you can print that same thing several times on different papers. So just make sure you take your paper towel, right? And wipe <laughs> off your phone and color it again and print it again. <laughs> Thanks for being the perfect example of what we're trying to teach. You're doing so great. You Thanks think for teaching me. Thanks for being here. And look at those teeth that are, have gone missing and they're growing in. You are growing up. This is crazy. <laughs> you have a wiggly tooth. And you have another wiggly? Miss Nora had a wiggly too. It came right out. <laughs> awesome. You, your eyes are so bright tonight. You seem very happy. Are you having a good day? <laughs> Thanks for sharing, beautiful. Okay. Still printing, still working on it. Bradley's, a, they're not giving up, man. They are going the distance. Oh gosh, look at that, Sophia. Cool, look at that, Mr. Matthew. You're trying different colors. These are awesome. Unmute yourselves. Oh, you are unmuted. Say Matthew. something, are you guys having fun? Do you like printmaking or not so much? Yeah? yeah? I like it, Why well, I want to go to sleep. You want to go to sleep? <laughs> then go to sleep and come back to it when you're awake. It's hard to do printmaking with your eyes closed. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you kids are good kids. You know that? That's amazing, Sophia. Are you guys, have, Sophia, are you asleep? No. No? I am. Oh, good night, Matthew. We'll tuck you in. That looks great. Oopsie, that's in my sister's sponge. <laughs> You're doing so great. Keep it up. Thank you for being here. Hey, whoa, it's working. Goodness sakes. Yeah, look at that. Amazing. Are you enjoying it, Luella? Mm -hmm. Are you figuring it out? Yeah. It's kind of tricky to figure out, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I think so too, but you, you went for it. You got it figured out. Good job. Perfect. How are my Lowry's? Did I lose the Lowry's? My Lowry's. Are they gone? They're gone. He went and he's playing video games. Hi, I haven't seen your, you guys for a little while. Hi, hi. Well, we're doing good. Okay, good to know. Let's see it. Ooh, Carmen. Happy, happy backwards, otherwise it's gonna show up backwards if I do it. Thank you for saying that. I can't believe I didn't tell you that in the beginning. You'll notice when you do letters in it, they come out backwards if you write them the right way on the phone. So this little smarty pants figured out the mirror symmetry thing and she knew she had to write her words backwards from right to left, huh? I make this one. Ooh. <laughs> oh, so you tried it and then said, okay. Ooh, yes. Good carving, Miss Bobby. Thanks for being here. It's so fun to meet you. What a beautiful friend you have there, Charlotte. <laughs> Art is more fun with friends, I think, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's why I'm sitting here alone in my studio and I have all of these friends around me. So thank you for being my friends and working with me. I love it. Good job. Hey, little Miss Eris, what you got? Hi. Let's unmute you. Did you know that I know? Did you know that I know cursive? Well, now I know. That's pretty cool. How did you learn? Um, by doing handwriting. Oh my goodness, because they don't teach it in schools anymore, do they? They actually do. <laughs> do they? I know some schools I don't. I got teach. my teacher. 
You, it's beautiful. Are you having fun today, looking out at that beautiful sky mm -hmm. in the patio? It looks like nothing to you, but it's actually something to me. Oh, you're just outside and feeling it. I love it. Thank you for being here. It's perfect. I hope you're enjoying it because I'm enjoying being with you. So thank you. I have somebody special here. Who is this? <laughs> I'm unmuted. Unmute. I got you. You're unmuted. Talk away. Hi. I can hear you actually already, I think. Can you hear us? Who, yeah, I can hear you. Who's this little guy? Is he doing some printmaking with you? Yeah. Hi, I'm so glad. Is this Can your you cousin? What? Introduce this cute little baby to me. Who is it? This is Blake, and he's one years old. He is so dang <laughs> cute. Alexis, is that your little brother? What? Yeah? He's going to be great at your printmaking, I can tell. <laughs> Natalie. He, he can't stay away from Natalie. Well, why would you want to stay away from Natalie? She's the greatest. Show me your prints, girls. It looks like you are busy, busy. Okay, so I already showed you that one. Yeah. I have this one. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, now that's an interesting way to do it. You... Did you use the same, you used two different prints, is that right? Yeah, I made two different prints and I did each in corner. Okay, way to think out of the box. I didn't even talk about that. And you are just fitting it in like a puzzle and honoring your artist's heart and going with your intuition and creating something fantastic. Are you having fun? Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. Me too. I'm working on a giant bow. Whoa, the big foam. Ooh, that's going to be fantastic. It's kind of fun, huh? Do you like the embossment tool? Do you like carving? Yeah. <laughs> you girls are pretty special. Do you know that? Yeah. yeah we know. Yes. So bright eyed and those artist hearts are so big. So thank you for sharing your artist hearts with me. Do you know how much it means to me? No. A lot. Yeah, thank you very much. It means a lot. I sit here by myself in this studio and I get all these beautiful, beautiful friends. So thank you for being here, that cute little baby. Love it. Okay, Miss Sage has something to share and then we're going to, we need to wrap it up here in a minute. Hi, Miss Sage. You have one more thing to share? Can, well, let's see. Unmute. Where are you? Hmm. There it is. Hi. Hey. And I have five wiggly teeth. Two teeth and this is doing one. Oh my goodness. Pull that up close. I want to see. Show me. Yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> you are so cute. Missing teeth, growing teeth, all sorts of business going on. You are busy. I only made three more um make me more papers to do with mom and me outside oh i love it you can come back to it you don't have to finish it all tonight do you yeah come back to it tomorrow or the next day did you have fun tonight i did too sweetie thanks for thanks for being here <laughs> have a good night sweetheart Okay, I have the Lowry's have a hand up. I've been ignoring them and she's crying and crying. Hope, stop crying. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> Hi. Hey, sorry when we weren't here before we were cleaning up. The I don't care. I have stuff. no judgment whatsoever at all. I just want to make sure you know that I'm checking on you and I love you. That's it. Uh -huh. So then Zach did this cool blue one, but he kind of spilled water on it. It, it was really cool before. I kind of like it with the water on it. Look at, look at how it's like dissipating. That's kind of cool. Yeah. It's like the frozen one that Miss Sage did. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I just made a smaller little checkered rainbow one thing. So yeah. cool. You say, where did you put your good ones, Zach? <laughs> so what? Zach had some good ones, but yeah. Ooh, oh. all four of them. Snapped it in half. 
It was an accident. <laughs> Are you kids having fun? Yeah, it was really fun. Thank you so much. I think you're pretty special. Thank you for inviting me into your home. You're so kind. I just love seeing your faces. Have a Thank good you. night, okay? Go enjoy those Thank video you. games. You're free. Zat, run. Be free. <laughs> well, I need the iPad we're on right now. Oh, fine. you better oh, exit quickly. No, <laughs> hey, I love truth. I am a lover of truth, and he is speaking truth. It's awesome. <laughs> it's your dad's birthday, so hopefully he doesn't spend all day on the oh, iPad. Oh, I only have 30 minutes. Dad, do something special. I love it. Enjoy the slide, <laughs> okay? Okay. You guys. Thank you. Hey, what's going on here? Whose is this? Mine. Whoa, 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 whoa. How did you do that? Right? It was a different project. We did it with chunkies. Chunky. What are chunkies? What are you talking about? Chunky paint markers. Yeah. Oh, yes. Like the tempura paint markers? Yeah. The tempura yeah. paint? I need to know about these chunkies. I don't know if I know. And those look really cool. Yeah. My dad did a lot of them. Really? A lot. <laughs> Need to spotlight him? Bye. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Yeah. I yeah. had one, but I gave it to you, but I lost it. Oh, man. You better make it again, okay? <laughs> Thanks for creating with me. Did you have fun tonight? I got a little stressed. It's okay. I don't mean to stress you out. You've come back to it with a great smile, and I appreciate that you came back. That was awesome. We have our days. Allow yourself. Be kind to yourself. Stress out. Throw a fit. Who cares? Then you'll get your composure, and you'll come back at it. That's how it works. That's how quarantine works, okay? We all have our moments <laughs> on our fits. Just enjoy the fit, and then come back. That's all you have to do. <laughs> see you, big guy. It's so good to see you. Bye. Have a good night. Oh, whoa, what have we got here? Hi, Miss Bobby. All over the place. That's awesome. That's your big piece. Good. Ooh, show yours, Miss. Oh, yeah, show them next to each. Oh, she did her letters backwards. Perfect. <laughs> a cactus with all the texture. Awesome. I don't think I did enough water. Hey friends, I am going to put everybody on unmute all and everybody can show their piece up to the screen and talk and say thank you and goodbye to your friends. <laughs> Hold your, if you have one more piece. Ooh, nice Sadie. Thank you for showing. This was my first one. Oh, I messed up a lot. Perfect. Ryder, fantastic. That is amazing. See oh, you next awesome. Tuesday. Yeah, you. you did a cactus too. You and Miss um you don't stop anything alike. Bye. Love you kids. We'll see you in a week, okay? See you next Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> okay. Oh nice cat. How about this guy? Oh yeah. Like she wants to show you her scribbles. Whoa, look at this cat. That, oh my gosh, it's a big, what kind of cat is that? It's like a tiger. It's got very good stripes. It kind of looks like my grandma kit in Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. Thank you, June. Thanks, Maisie. Thanks, Sadie. Love you guys. I'm ending it. I'll see you next week. I think great. Bye, Natalie. Bye, Bye. Bye. Bye Sage. Bye, Bye. Matt. And cheer Nora. anybody. Bye, Bye. Bye, I can't cheer anybody. I can't cheer anybody. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.